Hello everyone and welcome to episode 86 of Makai World Reviews. I'm of course Daytona Makai, Master of Minds and of Men. We're at the end of Miss Sheena Luthor's movie picks and what a compendium she's chosen. Very interesting. Not sure I would have picked any of these myself, including the one we are going to look at today in I Heart Huckabees. If you want me to review a movie you like, a movie you hate, hell, a whole month of movies you hate, Head over to my Patreon, and for a few bucks, I'm all yours, baby. Well, don't forget to subscribe, and let's see if I heart Huckabees. I Heart Huckabees, directed by David O. Russell. I can also say I've seen little to nothing the man has done. I did see Three Kings. That was a long time ago. The Fighter, I have a past interest in that. But Silver Linings Playbook and American Hustle did not seem interesting to me. Uh, so I really don't have much of an opinion here. He also co-wrote it with Jeff Bonilla. He did Life After Beth and Horse Girl, both of which I actually enjoyed. They were a little bit out of the formula, but I think Alison Brie was exceptionally good in Horse Girl. Starring Dustin Hoffman, I don't think I need to tell you who Dustin Hoffman is. From Midnight Cowboy, Straw Dogs, Sleepers, To Meet the Parents, and Kung Fu Panda. He might have truly acted in every and all genres of film, for better or worse. And Isabella Hubert, a French actress who honestly I've seen little of. Uh, I've seen Heaven's Gate, Passion, uh, and a few things here and there. She's had a long and storied career, so I'm excited to see her here. Release date for this was October 1st, 2004. What came out the same week? Shark Tale. Why do I feel like this is the second time I've talked about Shark Tale? It was fine. The Incredibles came out the same year. That was better. Though arguably Shark Tale had a significantly better cast. I don't think I want to talk about Shark Tale again. And Taxi. Queen Latifah and Jimmy Fallon stink up the joint in this bad movie. That's not what I want to talk about with this. It was around this time, 2004, 2005, and I was talking to a girl, might have been a date, and we were talking about movies, and I mentioned Taxi Driver. And she said she loves that movie. It's one with Jimmy Fallon. I stopped talking to her after that. On to the plot. Albert has a problem. Himself. His life is a mess. He has poor self-esteem. His job no longer trusts him thanks to his mortal enemy, Brad. And he's run into a tall African man far too many times for his own liking. He goes to a Vivian and Bernard, who are existential detectives, here to solve the case of him. We learn about his work drama. Brad is an overly charming executive for a string of department stores called Huckabees. He's manipulated the group Albert works for, who are trying to save some wetlands on a forest. Brad's company wants to put up a mall or whatever. So Vivian and Bernard keep an eye on him in varying strange ways, infesting every moment of his life. And we meet the rest of the cast. Uh, Tommy Korn, client of Vivian's, a firefighter with a temper, who hates petroleum and whose wife has recently left him. Dawn, spokesmodel for Huckabees and dating Brad. Albert has a crush on her. And Catherine, who is the opposite philosophically to Vivian and Bernard, sort of like uh, Nietzsche to the Rousseau. Tommy and Albert are paired up in a spiritual buddy system of sorts. We find out Brad is a new client of Vivian and Bernard's. Tommy assaults Brad and flirts with Dawn. The buddies leave to find the African gentleman, and they do, and have dinner with his adoptive family. Dinner is an awkward affair, to say the least, uh, with the religious, conservative, free market-loving family taking issue with Albert's want to conserve land from human encroachment and Tommy's general issues, especially with the petrol thing. These two break down afterwards and are led astray by Catherine, whose fatalistic idealism they embrace quickly. This leads Albert and Catherine to Albert's parents' apartment, where they have an emotional breakthrough via an old journal and a dead cat. Catherine and Albert begin a, a sordid and unusual love affair after that. Meanwhile, Vivian is exploring Brad and Dawn's slowly disintegrating relationship. It causes Dawn to question the nature of her role in the relationship and in society, and Brad has a personality breakdown. In the end, Brad loses his job his house, and his girlfriend. He's also assaulted by Shania Twain. Albert recommends Catherine to Brad. Tommy ends up with Dawn and enjoys her free spirit, and no one fucking learned anything, to be frank, as Tommy and Brad bond to end the movie. 
Okay, let's go ahead and dive into what that was. And what it was was pretentious, but not in a way you might expect. I, I talked to several people who said they shied away from this film because they felt it would talk down to them. But it doesn't. It, it, it does, however, try to talk over your head. It reminds me of a first-year philosophy student trying to throw out concepts at you, hoping you have no idea uh, that they don't know what they're talking about. It's incessant. And I mean that literally. The quippy, punchy dialogue does not end for one second. This is why I've never seen a David O. Russell film, and honestly, I don't want to after this. The quirkiness got tiring very quickly, honestly. The first 45 minutes were absolutely useless as a film. It did, however, have some positive that I enjoyed, which are the table, the dinner-lunch scene with the African uh, gentleman and his family was the best scene. There was a real conversation here. It was sloppy, uh, but it was a conversation that I bought. If the movie had this level of tension through it and of trying to talk about different things, I would have enjoyed it, but it really didn't have anything to say, so we only got this. The strange imagery when people were having their understandings of the universe or what have you, inner eye moments, was usually funny to interesting. Uh, some very literal things ranging to Jude Law with some tits to some various other things. Uh, the acting was actually pretty good, c uh, consistently. No one did a bad job, no one felt out of place or lazy. Every single person in this did their best with the material they had to work with, and end of note, Marky Mark is Tommy, Naomi Watts is Dawn, and Lily Tomlin is Vivian, were all stands out. Mr. Wahlberg was exceptional. I usually have a general distaste for him. He was the most interesting person who did the most with it. Naomi Watts looks incredible here, but she's also interesting. Seeing the cracks in her life, she wants to change. She tries to change, and she accomplishes it. She's usually good in everything, so no real surprise. And Lily brings her sarcastic charm that you might expect. That being said, while these people were all interesting, and the actors did a good job, every single fucking one of them are totally unlikable in many ways. The main character is a whiny poet with mommy issues who tries to burn down someone's house he doesn't like, almost killing a woman, and gets away with it. Uh, that's the guy you're supposed to be rooting for, to care? The bad guy is just a general yuppie scum. He never actually hurts anyone, but emotionally. And he gets so much more comeuppance than he deserves. And the rest of them were mostly shallow assholes. They didn't have any real reason to care about. Also in the beginning, Jason Schwartzman does this weird full-body jog that is incredibly strange, distracting, and it's something I can't stop thinking about. It looks like he had a, he had like a green screen behind him, but he didn't. Uh, there are some Douglas Adams comparisons that are hard not to notice, especially from Dark Gently's Holistic Detective Agency, uh, which functions in the same way to Vivian and Bernard's Detective Agency, in that it's about uh, the binding nature of the universe coming together to solve things that might be totally unrelated, but will help the person in the end. In fact, it reminded me a lot of that. Of course, it had some of, well, it attempts to have some of the comedy of that of Hitchhiker's Guide to Two Degrees of Success that I would say mostly failed. I'd like to point out, uh, I was told in no uncertain terms, I should find the philosophical relationship this film is attempting to create, existentialism versus nihilism, and not only give my revamped version of what I would do with annotations, but craft a new film from that. Well, no, because this film isn't saying anything. To discuss philosophy is is not to discuss philosophers. It's not to name drop or say what X, Y, or Z would have done to a note. It's to attempt understanding a moral, amoral sense of mankind and the surrounding universe. And I have nothing to say about this film, because it is saying nothing but the blandest, vaguest, most general ideas anyone could blather out. It did not have a real moral conflict. It was just about idiots having a few bad days, or a bad relationship. Thus, to you who suggested that, I reject your proposition, and I shame you for the suggestion. The soundtrack was incidental, mostly forgettable, uh, didn't take anything away, and honestly, probably, it might have helped some of the moments, more of the meandering scenes elicit a response they were going for. I don't have much to say about it. Um, overall, I, I went into this with an open mind and was almost instantly bored by it. I didn't dislike the movie so much as I was annoyed by it being on. So view took me a hell of a lot longer because I kept stopping the movie and doing anything else. It didn't compel me, didn't move me. I got nothing from it, and nothing of it was value was said to me. I would be hard-pressed to say it had anything to say at all in general. I can't imagine on what grounds or for who I'd recommend this movie, and I certainly do not. Well, that was the end of one Sheena Luthor's month. Some good picks... Some bad picks, but ultimately, she got what she paid for. Do you want me to review and possibly hate on your favorite movies? Check my Patreon, and while for a few bucks, I'll do just that. But if not, well, subscribe, and watching me is more than enough. Go ahead and add my Instagram under Demon Peaks for daily, 
daily Twin Peaks memes. Check out my podcast, Dark Peaks Podcast. Be back next week, where I begin my journey into the final frontier. As in August, I'm looking at the first five Star Trek films. So yeah, come back for that. This has been the Itzora Makaya, Master of Minds and Men. Thank you very much, and goodbye. <laughs>